Thank you so much for staying tuned. As promised, we now have an interview with an individual who has been through the throes of COVID-19 as a patient himself, and he's here to speak to us about his experience at the respiratory hospital being brought back to health. I'd like to welcome Mr. Fadi Leon, businessman. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I want to first of all say, you know, I'm glad to see you in good spirits. Thank you. You're fully recovered. Yes, indeed. Wonderful. Um, before we get into, you know, the, the talk about your diagnosis and everything, uh, you're widely known as a businessman here on Ireland. Uh, speak to us about your uh, particular experience with the pandemic in the last year as a businessman here on Ireland. All right, cool. Um, I owe a bar and a um, restaurant uh, in the heart of Rodibe. They call it um, Cafe 758. Um, at J.K. Morodney Bay and actually um, quite few of my, my, my income you know from the tourists and from the um, foreigners you know and from the events you know like such as jazz you know mm -hmm. all day right and things as such mm -hmm. um, unfortunately you know the pandemic you know, will be actually exactly like one year from now wow. right yeah. um, hit me as just hit like everybody else and I lost more or less like about 85 90 percent of my income because of the tourists and because of the restrictions on flights you know and because of the coronavirus and uh, things as such um nonetheless i was forced just like everybody you know and uh, by the guidance of the government you know to shut down and follow the protocols so i choose to follow the protocols as i said a while ago you know and um, be safe than being sorry Absolutely. Right. And it's like, like you know, it's, it's something like, you know, everybody have to feel it. So I'm just like one of them. Okay. No and, and speaking about feel it, you, you definitely felt yes, the full brunt of COVID-19. Yes, Talk to us about, um, you know, the weeks ahead of, well, the, the days before you got your diagnosis. Uh, what were you feeling in terms of symptoms and so on? Cool. Um, on the 20th of uh, January, um, the uh, the government you know, had suspended the liquor license and um, based on that you know actually i uh, choose to shut down the the operation of uh, cafe 758 for good until uh, further notes so i could be safe my staff can be safe and my customers you know although i have a restaurant and i could operate you know based on grab and go or based on the advice of the government but i choose to shut down completely uh, just to be safe you know i mean and my surrounding as well and I see all my operation, you know, and I see all my uh, movement, more or less. Somehow I got it, but I wasn't away. I had uh, COVID-19. So the first uh, four or five days, you know, actually I lost my taste, you know, I lost my uh, smell. I had a uh, joint pain. I had a headache, but it was a very unusual headache. I mean, I mean, I suffer from headache every now and then, but the headache I got in it was so unusual. Usually the headache can be like, you know, top of your head or the back of your head on the side, but my headache was literally behind my eyes mm -hmm. and something like you know I have never experienced before and um, I lost my appetite uh, I lost my strength as well um, therefore um, I was just like the others you know taking paracetamol taking what you call the local tea you know and the the other things like you know ginger tea stuff like that you know but I wasn't feeling too well as well it getting like getting worse so I was advised to to go to VG complex where they have a free um testing for Who covid 19. um a friend of mine actually okay. right just him to be on the safe side because your symptoms like so unusual and you're not uh, you, you you you're not recovering i really are getting better as a matter of fact so i went to visual complex you know and i did uh, two tests you know they call it a uh, uh rapid test mm -hmm. and the pcr test the rapid test in within half an hour 45 minutes you will be able to know exactly your status you know based on 60 percent 70 percent you know confirmation mm -hmm. and the pcr test will come i think about two days or three days after to confirm the 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 the, the how do you call it the rapid test so within half an hour 45 minutes the nurse tell me no i'm positive right so go home quarantine and then uh, soon as the pcr test comes out you know mm -hmm. to confirm what you have you know we'll we'll call for further information or for the for the advice as a matter of fact but that time i couldn't sleep properly i think like you know my situation went from bad to worse so i have decided you know hey i need the medical attention 
uh, with that being said, you know, I was in two mind to go to VH because of what I heard, the horror story, you know, the anxiety of being in a hospital. I've never been in a hospital before in my life. But I said, you know, this is my only hope. Take it or leave it. So I drove the following day to the hospital and... Um, you drove yourself? I drove myself to the hospital, literally, you know. It took me like almost about... I live actually in the north of the island. It took me like almost an hour. Because, you know, I was driving so slow, you know, and I was um, struggling for air. Wow. You know, do I couldn't, I couldn't you, breathe. Do you live with anyone else? Uh, no, I live with myself. Okay. Um, That's good. Thank you. So, as soon as I arrived to the hospital, you know, I parked my vehicle and um, I walk to the security. And I, I tell him, you know, uh, Chief, I can't breathe. I'm a positive. I was diagnosed with positive, uh, uh, coronavirus. He told me, come, come, come inside. We'll help what you what out. day was that? Uh, it was, I think, the 11th or the, you know, some, or, 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 some, you know, 11 or the 12th of, of February, more or less. Okay. And um, he told me, you know, have a seat you know, under the tent. And somebody will attend to you, you know. So he literally, you know, welcomed me. He told me, come inside, come. So he took my temperature first, you know, and he sanitized my hand and told me have a sitting under the tent. Uh, nonetheless, you know, within about 10 minutes, you know, a nurse came and she asked me to come actually to the other side of the of the hospital. And from the tent, you know, to inside the building, you know, lower down. I, I, mean, I mean, I'm not sure, you know, the name of the, of the, of the sections, you know. Mm -hmm. So she took my pressure, you know, she took my uh, sugar and I told her about my condition. And she realized, like, you know, my sugar, my sugar high, you know, and my blood pressure high. And she said, uh, we need to admit you. And uh, because of your breathing, you can't breathe properly, you know. So we have to go through the process. Sign some documents and stuff, you know, and then we walk to the, to the center, you know, right up the hill. I don't know if, I mean, I'm sure you know about it. We are between the security, you know, and going up the hill, you know. Right, so I was struggling wow. to make it. And um, of course, you know, I had a nurse, a male nurse, you know, help me out, you know, to walk through. And uh, when I tried to climb the steps, you know, it was a challenge for me because of my oxygen level. Yeah. Um, I couldn't climb properly, you know, so I fell a couple of times and he helped me out, actually. Finally, I made it to the center. And uh, I was admitted. Wow. I was admitted immediately, you know, and actually I came on time. Mm -hmm. And the doctors, you know, and the nurses, you know, were really on me mm -hmm. to make things happen. Talk to us about the treatment, uh, <coughs> how you were observed, what was, how long did you spend there mm -hmm. coming to recovery? All right, cool. Uh, so soon as I, um, soon as I entered the center, you know, um, well, they me to a, um, how do you call it, um, a special room, mm -hmm. like a private room, more or less, right? We have your own bed, you know, you have your own shelf, you have your own privacy, more or less, but yet still, you know, it has like glass glass partition so that they could observe you, you know mm -hmm. from, from from outside in case something happened or an emergency so you're on your in, in your own on my room. own i have my own room perhaps like you know six by six i'm very well, well comfortable i mean and it's enough for one person there's a nice bed right so the first thing that the, that the nurse did you know um she put a new bed sheet on the bed and uh, she told me the doctor will be with you shortly within about five minutes you know uh May God bless her always, you know, Dr. Gifford. She came in right away, you know, and she attended to me. And uh, she started the process. So the first thing is she put an IV right here in my vein, the, the upper vein. And um, the blood come out like more or less like a clotting. So she said, like, we need to extract some blood from you, you know, because we're afraid, like, you might have a sign of stri a stroke, you know, or blood clotting. So just to make sure, like, you know, you're all right. So she took her from there and she go from the bottom, you know, or from that side. And the blood started flowing. Right away, she, um, she started treatment and she gave me some medication, you know, some injections, you know, and stuff. And she put me on an oxygen machine because I couldn't breathe properly. Mm -hmm. um, thereafter, uh, two hours, you know, three hours, um, nurses coming in and out with a big machine, you know, like a monitor machine that has actually all the information, like, you know, you need, like, in terms of the sh blood sugar. The vitals. The vitals, you know, your blood uh, pressure, your oxygen level and uh, your sugar as well. I literally could not feel my fingers afterwards because the amount of time it had been 
<laughs> yeah, but I mean, for, for my own good, you know, yes. So it's more just like every two hours, you know, there were chicken, chicken on me. It's not only chicken on me as well, you know, chicken on everybody because the room is like, you know, n numbered. Yeah. Like number one, number two, number three, right, whatever, whatever it is. So they go in sequence. So you never felt neglected? No, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. As a matter of fact, you know, um, anytime like, you know, you're just like, you know, about to fall asleep, they will just come in to make sure like, you know, you have your blood pressure under control and stuff. Um, I was always getting like, you know, some medication on a, on a, on a regular basis, you know, to, I think to make, to make my blood thinner or something, because they were kind of way afraid, you know, for me, mm -hmm. right? And um, yeah, and I recovered, you know, within six days, seven days. Okay, right. So within, within a week you recovered? More or less, more or less, more or less. I mean, the, the, the service is amazing, the nurses are amazing. As I said, like, you know, in a previous talk show, you know, I don't call them nurses and doctors, I call them honeybees, because they're around the clock working. You know, the local nurses and the uh, foreigner or the Cuban nurses, more or less, if you want to call them. Mm -hmm. And the doctors is amazing, all of them, all of them. I, I, I couldn't actually uh, recognize them because you know, of the gaze they have. Yeah. Right, but they were just on point. They come there, they ask you, you know, hey, you know, how's your breathing? Anything troubling you? Anything helping you? Anything so and so and so? Please tell us you know, exactly what's your improvement in terms of breathing, you know, in terms of what you need or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and definitely before you you just indicated that you were apprehensive about even contemplating going to indeed, the hospital. Indeed, indeed. You know, what are your thoughts now when you perhaps hear individuals talk about uh, the level of um, the quality of service that is being offered at that facility? Uh, how does it make you feel following that experience? That be, 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 being honest with you, you know, being honest with you, um, the amount of horror stories I heard about VH and the amount of um, circulated videos about the poor poor service and the poor quality uh, of, of, of the service models or the environment or the establishment. I was really afraid. But the first day, honest to God, you know, the first day I entered the, the center, I was like, wow, this is a masterpiece. Because you're in a room by yourself. Nonetheless, you know, every two hours, there's somebody checking on you. It, your food comes on time as well. You have your breakfast. You have your full protein, your tea, whatever it is, your lunch, your dinner on time, your medication. I was also on drips. I don't know what they call, what they call the science word to eat, you know, the, the, the drips. And they make, you see, because, you know, we have a, a, a glass partition, so they're always observing you, like, you know, more or less like what they're passing by. So sooner they realize what they call the drips, you know, it's going down or about to go down, a new one comes in right away. Until, like, you know, you get to a point, like, um, you don't need it anymore. Because remember, you know, I lost my taste, you know, I lost my smell, mm -hmm. and I lost appetite as well, so I wasn't eating pussy. So the only uh, uh, nutritious, you know, or the nutrition that comes in you know, through the, the drip. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. indeed. Wow. Um, and today, how do you feel? Uh, I, I know that you got the, the, the bill of clean health from indeed. the authorities before leaving, but, you indeed. know, some persons, both here and abroad, say that they do have some residual effects. They feel, you know... The respiratory-wise, they do have some... Um, all right, cool. Uh, so, I'll tell you exactly what happened, you know. Uh, within six days, you know, seven days, actually, the doctor came in, and he told me, um, how long have you been on the machine? I told him, well, a couple of days. He told me, now. Nah, you can't be in the machine anymore. Because I check your breathing and things, you know, I mean, your lungs working properly. You have your sugar, your, sugar, your pressure, your oxygen level, like, you know, coming to come. So, I'm going to take you off the machine. You're gonna struggle, you're gonna have, feel like kind of discomfort, but nonetheless, I want your lungs to work on, on its own. I'm gonna leave the machine right there next to you. In case, in case of any emergency, you could just switch it on, you know, and use it. But try your best not to use it, if you don't need it. So that helped? <clears throat> oh yes, yes indeed. So he gave me the courage, you know, he gave me the, the, the hope, like, you know, I'm recovering. So that, that them, 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 them was alone, actually brought me up. And brought me like you know closer to to, to 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 recovery, so I start doing some exercises. I start walking around, you know. I start breathing on my own. Try my best like to forget like the machine is there. And gradually, I start recovering. I start moving around. I start walking actually better than how I came in because when I when, when I was admitting, I couldn't actually walk like about four five steps. I couldn't even like you know walk like further than the length of the cord mm -hmm. of the of the of the oxygen machine, fearing like you know I will I will die. 
Yeah. Well, actually, I was almost dead, as a matter of fact. Wow. And because of the help of, of the doctors, you know, and the nurses, right, and the center molest, right, I'm alive to, to, to tell a story right now. Wow. And in that moment of feeling, you know, your, your, your thoughts of your own mortality, tell us how, how, what, were, what, were, what was going on through your mind at that time? Because we've heard, you know, millions have passed away. You know, millions are still grappling with COVID-19 today. How did you feel in that moment? All right. Um, based on um, what I have heard about VH before, based about what I heard about St. Lucia in terms of like in a third world country and how limited resources we have, I was really terrified. I was really scared that, you know, I will not make it here. Based also on big countries like such as Europe, you know, Canada, America, you know, where people, like where, 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 where the health um, so advanced, or the health sector so, so, so advanced, and we have a limited resources. I was kind of way afraid. But when I entered the center, and I realized the amount of care and love, me and the others, or the other patients, were treated. I say, hey, nah. I mean, they, it's, 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 it's amazing, amazing, amazing place where actually big countries like, you know, where people actually try dying, you know, despite what they call the, 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 the advanced technology they have. With our limited resources, I survived to tell a story. Wonderful. And, and as you recovered, we started here on island with the national COVID-19 vaccine. Indeed. Uh, tell us what are your thoughts about the vaccine? Okay, I supposed to, um, to 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 get my vaccine actually you know prior to my to my to my to my uh, illness, but because of my immune system you know being jeopardized you know and you could say like you know, right now my immune system under construction, right? The doctor advised me like I can't take it right now right away because I need a little period of time for my immune system to recover. Nonetheless, have not been sick. I'll be taking it right away. I'll be one of the first to take it right away. So I advise everybody everybody just to take it there's nothing fear about it don't be scared to take it because at the end of the day you know my dear you know COVID-19 is not a joke believe in me it is not a joke this virus you know have one initiative and one mission is to kill you I've been there I know how it feels trust me and because of the help of the government and the Ministry of Health, from the head right to the janitors, I'm alive today. And healthy with no underlines. Mm -hmm. I left the center, you know, as healthy as ever. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I mean, I'm definitely, you know, sending another kudos out to the healthcare workers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Everyone yes, yes, yes indeed. So far yes, indeed. I mean, unfortunately, you know, I could not... Um, uh, I could not actually uh, remember, you know, the, 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 the names of the individuals in the, in, uh, the doctors, you know, like I know only what you call Dr. Gifford. Mm -hmm. And there's one nurse as well, you know, from um, from um, from Mikusa, you know, uh, Nurse Monsheri. But nonetheless, you know, I appreciate all of them. Mm -hmm. I wish I could meet them in person, you know, and shake their hand, like not physically, you know, but I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. like figure of speech, more or less, you know, and tell them thank you for saving my life. All of them. Right to the janitor. Because they will come there, you know, imagine, you know, even the janitor, you know, every morning and every night, they will come there, you know, with the special, special uh, morphine you know, and some solution, you know, and make sure, you know, I think that the place well sanitized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your, your garbage, you know, well flowing and stuff. So I don't understand exactly, you know, why uh, uh, we have to look, we have, we have to make the center so uh, bad in our eyes mm -hmm. that people are going inside there, you know, and being saved. I'm yeah. one of them. We're seeing the, the, the recoveries. I'm know, there. Happening. And also, you know, have not been saving I'll be on obituaries. <laughs> I've been honest with you, my dear, you know, because what I felt, it, I, don't, I don't even wish, wish it to my own enemies, just to tell you the truth. The mm -hmm. pain, you know, and the anxiety and the, the discomfort I've been through. Mm -hmm. I don't wish it to my own enemies. And I'm alive right now to tell the story. Wonderful. So thank you. Thank you to the Ministry of Health. Thank you to the government. And thank you to everybody that helped me out from my friends, my staff, um, my family, with the prayers, you know, and everything. I really appreciate that. 
Final question from me. We've heard from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force of breaches from last year uh, across sectors and business people, you know, Indeed. and also individuals, uh, social breaches in the social sector as well during Christmas time and so on. And uh, as a businessman in smack dab in the middle of, you know, having your business in the social sphere, uh, can you give any admonition to the general public in t terms of continuing to adhere to the protocols at this time? Because yes, we have the vaccine, but it's going to take some time before we experience herd immunity. Indeed. So we need to continue to adhere to the protocols. I could say, I could, I could, I could say a few things, you know. Um, the first thing is, you know, you have to be healthy in order to make money. That's one, number one. Number two, we making money. Money doesn't make us. It means if you have your health, you can continue to make money, you know, and have businesses, you know, and continue your life normally. You being sick, you don't adhere to the protocols, that's it for you. You could have all the money you need. It not do you anything, my friends. You need to adhere to the protocols. You need to understand exactly how that virus works. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the government, you know, I don't think the government is, uh, is, is, is uh, uh, how they call it? I want to use the right word. I don't think the government here, like, you know, don't like us, and they want us to, 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 shut down the business just because, you know, they won't shut down the business. Nah. There's a reason for that. To limit the social, this, to, to me the social, what they call it, uh, activities, until further information, you know, in terms of the virus, how it works, until more or less, like, you know, perhaps, like, as you said, like the vaccine, mm -hmm. everybody takes the vaccine, you know, and the immunity build up, you know, and stuff, perhaps, you know, life will come back to normal. I advise everybody to listen to the protocols and to adhere to the protocols, you know, and make sure that they are healthy and take the vaccine. It may, it, 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 it not worth it, trust me. It's not worth it, trust me, at all, at all, at all. Wonderful. Indeed. Thank you very much, You're welcome. Fadi Liu, You're for welcome. your time. Indeed. I, I'm glad to hear that you Thank are you. in the land of the living. You've Amen. recovered and you are well. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, no better way to, to, to wrap up our morning update than with this wonderful news of one of the individuals recovering yep. at the respiratory hospital, you know, giving his testimonial of the experience that he had at the respiratory hospital, saying that it was superb and that, you know, persons who are spreading information about, you know, uh, less than... Uh, experiences that they may, might have had at the respiratory hospital you know certainly uh, isn't the case so thank you very much Fanny, welcome. Leon, for uh, that welcome. endorsement on, for the respiratory hospital uh, of course uh, we do wish you all the best with thank your you. business going forward thank you uh, my name is jesse leon signing off for today we encourage you to stay tuned to ntn for more updates from the government of saint lucia we continue to keep watch over covid 19 of course our response is on the up and up, there is the national COVID-19 vaccination campaign underway alongside our response to managing the virus on the ground and uh, in the hospitals as well, the community uh, wellness centers as well. We do want to say kudos to healthcare workers who are, you know, putting their lives at risk essentially, you know, to ensure that the population is protected against this deadly virus. Do keep safe, adhere to the protocols, read up on the vaccine and once you're sufficiently, once you're satisfied that you know it meets all of your criteria uh, I, I do encourage you to get vaccinated of course the Ministry of Health is definitely looking forward to that do pre-register get pre-registered and go out and get vaccinated as soon as possible enjoy the rest of your day keep safe cheers